quilts and I'm here to do the start of the quilters patch block of the month I will not be giving any cutting instructions on these blocks because they are in a book and it's a copyrighted book but you can purchase your book you can go to connectingthreads.com that was the place that I found mine's at 40% off I'm not sure if it's still 40% off in the back of the book they have a grid that tells you what you're supposed to do each month and it's a surprise to me but I have to do two blocks this month I need to do the cosmos block and the definiums block so I'll just show you an up close photo of the block but I will not be showing you any cutting or construction photos but this is the cosmos block And the Delphinian's block is this block here. So for my Cosmos block, I need a background, two different, at least two different fabrics for my flowers, two fabrics for my leaves, and one for my stem. So what I have decided is that I'm just going to use various pieces of scraps. So I got quite a few different greens and what I did was I just pulled out about five for right now because I am actually going to be scrapping my greens throughout the blocks. So I'm not going to just stick to two or three greens per block. I'm just going to put in whatever I want wherever I want. So those are my greens. And then this is my favorite blue. So this is my last piece of this fabric. So I thought I would add it into this project. And my second blue is going to be this piece of fabric. And this here is my background fabric for the Cosmos block. I have my neighbor cutting grass on the other side of me so we do hear the lawnmower but I just want to go ahead and continue this video I do have all of my pieces cut out for block number one so I am now going to go to the sewing machine so the first thing that we're going to do is make our star flowers so I am going to be taking some quarter square triangles that I have and adding half square triangles to this unit. And so I will be making more flying geese units just like that. At this point I want to press my unit open and I am just going to finger press because these pieces are pretty tiny and I don't want a whole lot of distortion from the iron so I am just going to finger press them And now I want to add my triangles on the opposite side so I can make the flying geese unit.
have all of those eight sewn and I need to make four where I'm using my second blue fabric. I'm back and I have my pressed open units. Now what I want to do is I do want to get rid of all of these dog ears because I don't want them in my block. Now it's time to make the little evening star flower blocks and with this particular fabric I'm going to use my opposite blue in the middle and so I will be making two blocks with the flying geese in this direction and then I will have squares in the corners so I okay. and so since I have eight of these little flying geese units I'll be making two star blocks with this color combination so that's what I'll be sewing next So I'm just setting them up on the side of my sewing machine so everything's in the right orientation and I'm just going to chain piece these units through the machine. And here are my other flying geese units. I'm just going to put these aside. So again, I'm just chain piecing my little star block, then I don't have to worry about realigning or readjusting anything because everything's going in the right orientation. that I have that I'm chain piecing everything and leaving something under my presser foot at all times trailing in the back and that way I don't have to worry about things getting stuck underneath and so now I have the start of my block I'm going to press everything towards the squares and away from the actual geese units so now I have something that looked like that if I can get it to stay up and I am now going to add the other pieces on the opposite side and that way I don't have to worry about is my orientation correct long as I lay it out correct pick up pick up my pieces and place them down without turning my hands and I know everything is orientated correctly I want to go back and cut off the other side of my first block so I can finish it off. See, I, I sewed both of them at the same time so I could just chain piece everything. So I'm pressing again everything towards the squares away from the geese unit. And you have to excuse me, I have my sinuses flared up today. So. A lot of sniffles even though I've taken medicine so and you do want to make sure that you're using a quarter of an inch or a slight scant quarter of an inch with these blocks because they are so tiny you want to make sure everything's going to fit together 
So if you're not sure of your quarter inch, you need to make sure that you know your quarter inch before you start stitching these blocks. Whenever you're making miniature size blocks, you have less room to adapt and, and stretch them to make them actually fit. So now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to take off my first one. And again, I wanna press all my seams away from the flying geese units. And when I do that, that also means that all of my seams are now pressed in the opposite direction. So when I turn this to the back, my top and bottom rows, the seams are pressed out. The middle row, the seams are pressed in. So when I go to sew these together, these seams will lock and nest. And since they're so tiny, I won't even worry about pinning right here. Just go ahead and stretch my seam so that it matches. And then I just go ahead and sew. Not stretching the seam, I'm actually just making sure that they lock into one another. You shouldn't have to stretch. I kind of just pull the top layer up so that I can make sure it nests. So let me see if I can show it to you again. When I first start, I lock the first seam. I don't want to use pins on miniature things because pins kind of distort things. And then once I get past my intersection, I then want to pick up my top one, push under the bottom, and place the top down. And then when I pull it back, they automatically lock. So I know that those seams are now locked at the seam line. I find with tiny things, if you don't have to use pins, they actually sew out just a little bit better. So there's my top row here. So now I need to sew the bottom of the star. So I lost battery power and I'm not really sure where I left off on stitching these units together. So I apologize in advance if you are missing any of the actual sewing. My uh, camera only records for so long and then it cuts off. Okay. So now that I have this one trimmed, I want to now make a star where I've got the dark blue as star points instead of being in the center and I'm going to chain piece on some of my leaf prints you're going to take these units and you're going to put a smaller square on top and we're just going to sew corner to corner so I'm just using it as chain piecing right now because I don't want to break my thread I'm not actually at that step yet because I wanted to get my unit off so that I could press my seams. So for my leaf, since I'm chain piecing with the leaf, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep showing you this step because I'm going to cut the camera off. So all I did was just trim that little part off. It's not anything usable that I can keep. And then I will press this seam like that and then I want to put another one on the opposite corner and I want to stitch in the same direction so I want to stitch again going down and you can mark you could draw your lines you can use an angler I do have an angler but when the pieces are small, I'm able to go ahead and make those without having to press those seams. So that's kind of what I did. And now I just want to sew my last rows together on this unit. I take this leaf and I trim it again, diagonally corner to corner and press that seam up. And this is what I have to do here. And so I need 
11 of this shape here. So I am just going to turn the camera off here because I don't want to lose power. Together. I'm back and I have gone to the ironing surface and I have pressed my seams on my star blocks on those rows that I sewed together. I actually pressed them away from the center and that's what was recommended by the directions as well. So I am laying this out on my design wall because I used more greens in my leaves than they did. They used two fabrics for their leaves and I used four but I did use a different fabric for my stem as well so I used five greens in this particular block so I am just going to be sewing these columns together so that I can make my actual flowers so I'll just show you a little bit of me sewing and then I will come back with this completed block and remember we still got block number two Cosmos block my power is about to go out on my battery but I just wanted you to see the first one that I have done and I will work on the second block and I will show you the second block when it's done and I'm not going to show any cutting on that because it's basically the same process I'm just making sure that you know what your assignment is and to get you motivated to get your blocks completed I am now working on my block number two the delphiniums block and I have now decided that I want to use white background in my quilt I decided to do white as a background instead of different creams or picking a cream because I wanted to have that old-fashioned look as far as the background with the quilting because I may do some enhanced quilting with this quilt so I will probably be doing I will most definitely be doing block number one over but that's not critical at this point I'm just showing you that I have cut my block number two I have switched my colors in the book this block is blue I have a little variety because I didn't see where they used a lot of red in the quilt top and I do like red that's one of my favorite colors so I'm adding it in right here so I will start sewing this block and then I will see you with the completed block and I have my second block completed and I just have them sitting side by side and I'm just torn as to whether I want to continue with the white or to make all of my blocks in cream colored background fabric so you all give me your opinion down in the comment section I'm just going to stop right here and wait because I don't want to make any more blocks with me being undecided so I thank you all for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye bye